but it's not like an instantaneous thing. Don't think it's like, oh, I'm just going to spray it on and be done with it. It's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. How, how long can you leave it on? You can leave it a long time. And I just basically leave it on, brush it around, hose it off, let it kind of drip dry, and then do it again. And, and you'll know when it's clean because it'll really start to foam when it, when it, when it finally gets to the aluminum and gets through the varnish. Then it'll start to start to uh, do a light etch on the aluminum. The a lot of guys try media blasting the, the blocks. The problem with media blasting a block is that um, at, they look really nice. Um, there there are two problems. One is getting rid of all the glass. Almost impossible. You would definitely have to drill out all the passages to get rid of rid of the glass. And you'd probably spend three or four hours washing it. You'd have to wash it ten times. I don't go that route. Tried it once. Not a good <laughs> idea. Um, the um, where was I going with that? Media blasting. Um, the the problem with media blasting is when you get a drop of oil on it, it goes everywhere. So you see it, and it doesn't. It's not easy to clean. With this etching primer, it doesn't take the the uh, sheen or the, the kind of the, the surface finish off of it. So when you get a drop of oil, you can just wipe it off. It doesn't, it just doesn't penetrate. Uh, Tom, how do you clean the water side? You know, does that, does that stuff take off the rusty, yeah. hard scale? Yeah, it does. And also, you can use things like limoine, clear CLR. Those, <clears throat> those take that stuff off. Sometimes you just have to brush it. This stuff doesn't work on the timing cover. The timing cover has zinc in it, and it just turns it black. So you, you kind of got to be cautious where you use it. You know, on the, on the aluminum blocks, it works really good. But on the, on the die cast parts, which is the timing cover, which has zinc in it, um, it'll just turn the zinc black and it'll just look horrible. Mm -hmm. So that you just have to clean with, you know, with a brush and, and do whatever you can. It's, again, just a lot, of, a lot of hand labor to clean it up. Also, you know, if you really want something that's if you got a block that's really just totally screwed up, um, there are there are aluminum paints that, that can be done. That particular engine that's sitting on the porch has been painted with aluminum paint, and the aluminum paint that I used on that was was a paint. I don't know if it's available anymore, but it was it was used by Honda for their motorcycles. They used to spray their cases with it. Mm -hmm. It's called Honda Case Paint, and uh, it's very very durable. Works really good. Uh, if you get acetone on it, it comes right off. Mm -hmm. so, um, but the trouble with that block was is that at some point in time, somebody had sandblasted it, and it was just disgusting. I mean, it was really messed up, so we had to paint it. There was no other way. But I don't, I don't like to do that. Um, let's see. What else? Anybody got a question about teardown? So this thing is that... In addition to if you send it out to a, to a yeah, shop. it won't come back like that. <laughs> It'll just what what they'll get rid of is ninety nine percent of the grease and stuff, but how they won't they don't get rid of the varnish. And stuff. How necessary would this last step? Be? It's not necessary. Just it's all visual. Yeah, I mean it just depends on how how you want it to look. You know, if you're not if you're not building a show motor and you know, I mean it doesn't. It's just it's just it's just beautification. Savy grease, we smear it on the lemons terrace. Yeah, yeah. We have to figure out a way to, to grease them up again. <laughs> when you paint the block, do you paint it naked, absolutely bare? Yeah. And then assemble the motor? Yeah. That's the easiest way. Will that spray or media affect any of the machine surfaces? Um, no, but what what it what will happen is is since you're rinsing it with water, things will rust. Mm -hmm. So what you gotta do is you gotta make sure that you, you dry it. And then spray WD-40 or something on it to get rid of the, the moisture. Otherwise, you know, like the studs and stuff will all rust up. Within, don't wait an hour. I mean, it, you know, that's what happens is that when the metal's really clean, it rusts up like instantly. You'll just be blown away. It's like, this is just, I just took this out and it's all rusty. I went out to have lunch and it came out <laughs> rusty. What, what's the um, backstory on this particular engine? Like, where did it come from? Where is it going? This motor is, belongs to the gentleman with the black hat. It's in a 69 GTV, uh, okra in color. You guys know what the okra yeah, color is? Yellow. 
And um, that's several nicknames. Original, <laughs> <laughs> original owner. Well, my father was the original owner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's a great car, and um, it's 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 always drawn a lot of attention. And and Brooke just decided that it's got to go to the next level. And so, so the seventeen fifty. It's a seventeen fifty. Um, we're not doing too much hop up with it. We're doing we're doing a little work on the head. We'll probably add another twenty horsepower. Um, it, it had been converted to a 71 injection pump. We're going back to a 69 injection pump, basically getting it back to its, to its original state. Um, doing the, the, the car externally was very nice. Um, in, internally, it was nice except for the dash. Brooke is now realizing what a big job it is to change the dash. <laughs> Think carefully. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, <laughs> no, I this got, car. I have a pad for pad. sale in case anybody wants it. Uh, <laughs> I'll sell you that cheap. Uh, um, I may end up selling it this dash unless we can make it fit. <laughs> the, the other, the main thing was to take the motor out and and, and uh, Andy Shank repainted the engine bay, so the whole engine bay has been redone. Um, we're waiting for the rubber from Patrick, so we'll be able to start assembling it here pretty quick. So uh, what do you do? Um, pressure's on. Nice. Car. Should be here. All right, um, so let's start with the head. Um, what we'll do is I'll, I'll, um, I'll pull one of the cams and um, actually pull one of the valves out and then show you how it goes back together and then talk about how to adjust the shims. Because I'm sure a lot of you have probably wanted to understand how to, how to adjust the valve tappets and stuff like that. So we'll, we'll, we'll do that. So, First order of business is to take the um, take the cam off, and you do that by taking these six bolts, these six nuts off. You have Feel free to walk up here and walk around if you guys want. Do you have a surplus of uh, shims? I have shims <laughs> of all <laughs> sizes. That's a leading question. <laughs> That's right. You need a big mirror on top. Special sequence to loosening the nuts. Uh, I got the best spot. When you loosen these, what you want to do is you want to get the cam in a position where the, right here, the minimum amount of pressure is on the. That's right. So you don't want to turn so can where one valve is completely open. <laughs> Yeah. You, yeah. you want to balance it out. So like top dead center position? Well, top dead center isn't exactly the, the best place, oh, okay. okay? But when you look at it, like, come here and you can oh, see, we've got, we've got this one slightly depressed and this one slightly depressed. But not oh. none of them are sitting perfectly, oh, okay. you know? So yeah. Yeah. that that just makes it a lot easier. Otherwise, what ends up happening is when you loosen the, the bolt, it just pops, you know, it just yeah. pops yeah. off. Oh, all right. I never thought about that. And they don't always come off real easy. I mean, a lot of times you gotta you gotta whack them a little bit to to, to get them to come apart. And you didn't seem to be taking a particular order there. No, no, you just loosen them up. So. Okay, these are marked from the factory. You want to check before to make sure that they are marked. I've, I've not found any that weren't marked. Okay, the markings on the early ones were very easy. It said one on the head and one on the cap, okay? And two, two. These don't go that way. The new ones only mark number one, okay? But you can figure it out. It's not very hard. Number one has the marking for the cam, okay, for the timing. And we'll go over that in a second. So one goes next to one, okay? Two is the next one over. Three is the next one over. Now you figure, now what's this side, okay? Because they're not marked. This one's four, five, six. Is it four, five, six, or is it four, five, six? Six has the timing mark, so you know where six goes. So you, five has to be here, and four has to be here. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? You can figure it out, okay? They, they, they just got a little sloppy in there, in, in the older, in the newer cars. In the older cars, they marked everything very well. You'll also notice that each one of these caps is marked in this, on the same side. They have to go on the same way. These things were put on and they were bored in place. They're not interchangeable. If you lose one of these, you're screwed. If you put one of these on backwards, the cam won't turn, okay? So 
Very, very important that these go in exactly right. What happens if you put them in the wrong order? They won't work. They won't work. The cam won't turn. Okay? Okay. And, and you'll know it. You'll know it. One, <laughs> you'll be tightening it and it's like, mm, this doesn't feel good. And, and sometimes you'll, you'll jerk the stud right out of the head. Okay? And, and that, that's not a catastrophe, by the way, guys. It's very easy to heal a coil these back in. And it is very common for these studs to come out of the head. Mm. Don't panic if that happens. It can be fixed. It can be fixed in the car. Okay?